In this video, we're going to be looking at using PNGs for your composites in Luminar Neo. And if you've just jumped into this video, can I suggest you check out these videos here? And this one may make sense. Right, so let's dive right in with this one. What we're going to do is I am starting with an image layer this time because I'm going to build on top of this one. I'm not using the grey layer as mentioned in the previous video and I really need to buy a new chair because this one is squeaking every time I move. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this image up and as per usual I have already everything loaded that I need for this image in here. So what I'm going to do is, this is the power of PNGs when it comes to compositing. I'm going to click that and add that into my layer. And as you can see there, it drops in. Now, these images all fall together. I'm really lucky with this one, they all fall together. This one was originally created in Photoshop and then I broke it all down and brought it in here just to show you what I'm going to do with it. But as you can see, this is the one image that has been spliced up in Photoshop and put together to give me that effect. And that's what I was looking for for this. I wanted some edgy type rocks uh, to do this. So there's the first layer in. So this is a PNG. As you can see, it already fits the document and that's because this was originally made in Photoshop. Photoshop's the one that I use predominantly for creating my composite images. And I'm just creating these videos to, for anybody that doesn't have a subscription and that may want to create composites using Luminar Neo. So hopefully these help you. So that's my first layer in. And as per usual, I'm going to build the entire image up and then go in and edit my individual layers. So my next layer in this is the girl with the axe. If I can find her, there she is there. So she will drop in here and again she'll be 50% opaque. So I'm going to do that. And as you can see, she's filled the aspect ratio of this. I don't know if I want her like that. I may take her in just ever so slightly to about there. And then I'm going to move her over. Because I want it one of the hero shots. And she's fine at that. Maybe make her a bit bigger. Just to about there. That's okay for me. Next one is building the atmosphere. So the main part of this is the girl with the axes. The rest of it is going to be building the atmosphere within this. The background tour now, and now this is one of my favorite uh, images for this type of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring that down about around about there. So for me, what I've done is I've made that about there is perfect. So what I've done here is I've looked at the baseline for this and you'll see why in a minute. I've looked at the baseline for this and I notice it's just above that small nail in the, the axe head. So I'm going to click OK with that. I'm going to take it right up and then go into screen. So I've got that there which I'm happy with. I'm going to add another one. And it's the same one again. I just want to make this exactly the same. So if I drop that in, bring it up to about there, and you'll notice that that is probably around the same size. It might be slightly different, but it's okay for what we're going to do. I'm going to do that and then change it to screen as well. So we have the two of these in front of the girl, but I want her behind the girl. So then we jump into the layers instead of moving the two of them. I'll just move her up. So she is now in front of them. The bottom one here, I'm going to flip like that. So you may not have noticed any difference, but if I move this down, you'll notice it now. So I'm going to put that in there. And then I'm going to bring this one up and bring that one down to around about there, just around about there. It's just roughly and it's just to show you the image coming together. I'm also going to scale it up slightly to about there. Go into the second one and scale that up to about there as well. Now there is a reason for using these and I'm going to take it over to about there. 
and then that one over to about there. Now it may not be perfectly central, but it will allow you to see why I've used it. And the reason I've used them, if I turn them off, hide layer and hide layer, you'll notice that the rocks are quite light there. And because it's a screen blend, it's enabling it to pick up. Do you notice that? Some of the colours that are in here as well show there. So the rocks suddenly now look as if they've got that warmer glow because of the colours in those two layers. Few more things still to do. I'm going to get in and add my usual smoke. So I'll go down here and I'll find a wisp of smoke that I quite like. Let's go for that one. And we are going to scale this down slightly. And we're just going to put it in around about there. So you can see, I don't know if you can see this. I'll just turn up the opacity of this smoke. This is four smoke, four and wisp smoke. And it's one of the pro edu assets. So I'm going to turn that back just a bit there. And I'm going to drop it in there as if it's sitting on this here. Then I'm going to drop it behind. And now I'm not sure whereabouts I'm dropping it behind. I might take it to there. It just depends what it's going to do with this. And then I'm going to go for screen. And I am also going to turn the opacity up. So as we can see it. So you, you know it's there. And you can see it's there. Let's just stretch it slightly. But we don't want it to be a main part of this. So we may want to drop it behind one of the layers. We may want to drop it behind two of the layers. It's entirely up to you when you do this. So once again, I'm going to add another one. And I'm going to add the same smoke, I think, for this one. Let's go for... Oh, let's go for a different smoke. Let's add that one. And let's bring that down. Again, that's a four smoke as well. You can see by the straight edge on the bottom of it. It's just a different smoke. That one actually looks nicer. So I'm going to place that around here. Just about there. Make a screen blend. And turn the opacity of that one up. So that's actually probably more prominent for this. So I'm going to drop that one behind there. And that one is actually better. So I'm going to remove this one. Remove layer. So we're left with this. I'm going to add a second one of that. Plus, see all. And it was that one. That will drop in. Size-wise, because it's smoke, it doesn't matter if it's the same size or not. What matters is what's showing at the top. And you can see along here that line, so we know we have to get rid of that line. I'm going to flip that one that way. Move it around there. Just place it there just now, screen blend, and then turn the opacity right up. So we've got those two smokes there now. Let's take it down behind the girl again. So we've got the smoke coming up from the background. But as I say, what you've got to watch is you've got to watch that we don't have any of these lines. Probably painting on the wrong layer there, so I'm going to go back into brush, masking, erase is what I hadn't done. So remember and click erase. And now we can take out the edges. So there we go. That's that one gone, but too much. So let's paint it back in. Being aware that we don't go up and start to create a line in here. So I'm also going to take some line off the bottom. And in this case, I am just going to go in and do that. So we've got the smoke coming up there. We'll do the same with this one, but we'll make sure this time we're on a raise. Brush, we're still on a raise. And we'll take that one out as well. And that's the edges of that one going. So everything's looking good so far. That line is annoying me, but it may be a case of just making this bigger in the actual image, like so. And that will take care of that for me. And it still doesn't detract from the image too much. 
So we've brought in one P, two PNGs because the girl was a PNG as well. And you see how easy it is. I'm not having to mask or anything. So if you're creating composites, look for PNGs online. It's the quickest way that you can throw your composite together. Or if it's a white layer and you go for a screen blend for these effects that I'm going for as well. So we're going to add a couple more layers into this uh, before we actually edit it. And let's just go for the birds, just to see if they work. They weren't in the original image, but why not? Let's see if they work. Let's take them down in size, just about there. Put them up about there. And take them up. And now this blending mode should be multiplied to get them like that. Yes, it is. Because if we're going to screen for this one, because it's light against dark, it tries to blend the background colours through. So multiply is this one. And there we have those buds. Now we can keep all of them in. Or just one of them. And I'm going to leave them there. But again you'll notice that there are lines on this. So I'm going to take the brush size down. And I'm going to blend these out as best I can. Now this one's not going to be perfect and I know that. But. If I can get as best I can with this. There you go. Let's go for that. And it probably doesn't need the three birds, but we'll leave it just now. So that's the image coming together. The base here in front of the girl, again, I'm going to add depth into the image. And that's a good thing to do with your composites. Add depth. It takes it away from the flat image. So simply for this one, I am going to add more smoke. And let's just see what smoke I have here. Let's go for that one. This one might be too much. Then again, it might not. So I might get away with that and then make this bigger. A bit too big there. And let's stretch it out that way. So this may be too much with this one. Let's see how it goes once it's blended. Screen. And then we can drop the opacity right down. Just to do that. And that gives us the depth of the smoke at the foreground, the girl, the smoke behind her, the rocks and everything else there. So that's the image nearly together. What we're going to do is we are going to then go back in and edit the image. I want more light. I want the highlights on her face or from behind her. So again, I'll add my light leaks. And that one there is one of my favourites, so probably appears in a lot of my images. Uh, can be overused, but in this case, let's just go for it. So we have that, and then we take it and we drop it behind the girl. So that we have there. And that works better, because you notice, although she's lighter here and it's darker down here, you're drawn into her face anyway. This has came in because of the type of layer it is. So I'm just going to make that slightly bigger there and there. And I'm going to bring that up as best I can just to around about there. So I'm quite happy with that so far. Now it's just a case of going in to edit the image. And there's not much editing to do with this, to be totally honest with you. I'm going to increase the light. Uh, behind her and I'll show you how I'm going to do that so I'm going to go into my base layer this time and my base layer this time if you see the other videos is a sky and if I wanted to get into sky sky selection I can get in and change it and it should update there we go and that looks terrible uh, I can go in and choose any sky that I want uh, but for the drama in this one, it needs to be a darker image. But I don't want any of them. I'm quite happy with the sky I have. So that's that one there. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get in and add sun rays. And I'm going to put the sun rays just there. And let's see what that does. So that is now increasing the light behind her. Now we can go overboard with this. Uh, and we could drop it wherever we move it is going to have a different effect so if you're adding them in just to highlight anything in an image look around and keep moving and adjusting them until you get to the point where you think yep I'm quite happy with that in this case I'm going to leave it there 
I'm going to just increase it slightly and the sun rays length I can bring back or I can push even further. Now that we're at this stage, the last part of this edit is one more flare and we'll add that to the top and that will drop in like so. And you notice there's quite a bit and it's helping accentuate the red. For me, I'm going to flip that one to that side and I'm going to turn the opacity down slightly. And again, this is just to add depth to the image. Now I'm going to get into paint and I'm just going to paint it in in the areas that I want it. And I don't actually want it up over the sky, so strength is 100%, so I'm quite happy there, quite happy there. Now I could have used a linear gradient and faded it in, but I'm quite happy and comfortable using the brush. So that's it now, that is the final image. Hopefully you get something from that, and I realise it's just me placing PNG on top of a screen blend, on top of a PNG, and so on and so forth. But we're looking at it from different angles, and the videos are really here just to hopefully inspire and hopefully give you some idea into a thought process when putting the images, in this case composites, together. Thanks again for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.